Hi, I'm Sandy Simpson from Apologetics Coordination Team, and I want to tell you about the new indigenous quote-unquote Christian religion that's developing around the world. Nothing exemplifies the new indigenous Christian movement of people like Richard Twist, Danny Kakawa, Aloha Keakua, YWAM, and other proponents so much as the following statement on the home page of Aloha Keakua site. It says this, As indigenous people, we need to embrace God as ours and also know that God embraces us as his just as we are. Our goal is to provide indigenous people, missionaries, and Christians with information, training, and materials that show the true nature of Jesus. That his way is not to be a foreign religion that destroys people groups and their cultures, but one that brings people groups and their cultures to their highest fulfillment. Now, Mike Oppenheimer and I have written extensively on the neo-paganism of this movement and you can find it on the WCGIP page of my website or in our book entitled Idolatry in Their Hearts. If you re wish to read up on their efforts to vilify mission work and ruin the gospel message, please familiarize yourself with what's going on. I will hopefully not plow too much ground that's already been plowed with this article, but I felt I had to address the above statement by Aloha Keakua for the, the number of unbiblical ideas and lies with which they are trying to diaprax people. I feel very sorry for many indigenous peoples in various cultures who are buying into this stuff without thinking through the ramifications. First of all, they say we need to embrace God as ours. You need to understand that Daniel Kakawa and others of the WCGIP mean by the statement. They don't mean that everyone is free to repent and believe when they hear the gospel. They mean that they present a God within the context of the various indigenous cultures that has been worshipped in the past as some kind of supreme being. Thus they can claim it is truly their God uh, and not an import from the Bible. Well. This is silly because if their God is God and other gods are also God, then this does away with the one true God eternally existing in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What Kikau and others are all about is getting people to want to be quote-unquote Christians from different cultures to make up their own mythology in order to pr prove that their cultures always worship the true God. But that's patently false and they should know it by studying cultures and religions. Just because God revealed himself to his chosen people Israel does not now, in the dispensation of Jesus Christ, make him unavailable to all cultures. But by trying to sever the ties between the Gentile Christians and the Jewish people ends up cutting the branch from the tree. And that's Romans 11 and Ephesians 3.6. So you need to read a couple of articles uh, that we've written called Foreign Gods as God, uh, The Gods of the Nations Are Not God, and Cultivating Other Gods. The second point is they say God embraces us as His just as we are. Hmm, just as we are? You mean as sinners who worship other gods and our own sinful lusts? If we live on the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, and repent of our sins, then as the song says, we can come just as I am. But God does not accept unrepentant sinners from any culture, including Israel, just as they are. This is why God had to send his only son to die in our place. And the gospel must be preached for a person to come to a saving knowledge of Christ. That's Romans 10, 14 and 15. Jesus Christ was born a Jew, but came to die for the sins of anyone who will believe and repent upon the uh, upon believing the gospel message. Third point, they say show the true nature of Jesus. When they talk about the true nature of Jesus, they're not talking about the nature of Jesus Christ as defined in the Bible, the biblical Jesus. They're talking about another Jesus who has revealed himself in all religions and cultures from the beginning. His gospel is seen in the stars, and was not a mystery before the apostles revealed it. Romans 16, 25, Ephesians 6. Also, there were ways for people to be reconciled to God quite apart from hearing messages revealed to the apostles. Here's what Leon 2 said. 
So these are clues that we felt God left the Hawaiian people. Evidence that he's left as well as processes he has left in which our Hawaiian people can respond in a very natural way to really set things right between them and God. A few years ago, friends and I were contemplating how we would be able to reach indigenous peoples and that what was prevalent at the time was a misconception among within the Church of God's presence here on the island. The misconceptions that, as was expressed earlier, was that God didn't arrive until the missionaries arrived. You know, and so when we started to look at this, we started to look into our culture and see what things within our culture that God had originally intended for this particular group of people, Hawaiians. So the fourth point is, he says his way is not to be a foreign religion that destroys people groups and their cultures, but one that brings people groups and their cultures to their highest fulfillment. This last statement shows their contempt for mission work. They believe that preaching the gospel to the whole world is actually destroying cultures and people groups. But God's Son did not come to bring people groups and their cultures to their highest fulfillment. He came to save sinners from every cultural and religious background. He did not come to affirm cultures that are the constructs of men, Mark 7, 8 through 9, and their false religions, but he came to show people that they cannot be saved without him. So when you take that away, you take away any hope of salvation.